Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to Dishonored. Oh, I've been waiting to do this one for quite a while. And with Dishonored 2 just around the corner, I think it's a week away today, if I recall correctly. You know what, this is probably a good time to go and have a look back at Dishonored, because I love Dishonored, I genuinely do, I think Dishonored is... A fantastic little game. A flawed game, but a brilliant one. I typically describe this as a flawed gem, and I will always stand by that description. Because, yeah, Dishonored does so much right. It's a brilliant overall game. But there's some things in it that don't quite mesh together either. Right, let's get into this, shall we? Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else. And the Spymaster was right to insist that I send you. The plague has taken so many, and we must find a cure. When you are near, my heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. Now obviously it's a Bethesda game, so I'm beginning in a boat with a couple of soldiers, except on this occasion, interestingly, I haven't actually just been captured and I'm not being taken to be executed or thrown in prison, actually. These guys technically work for me, but uh, despite that, I'm not actually allowed to move or do anything. It is as if I was tied up. So, you know, some things just never change when it's Bethesda. Also, I've always liked this, by the way. They've got a massive lock inside the palace. So you come in off the river, then you come in here, and yeah, you actually get raised up inside this massive lot which is a really cool little security system so there is access to the palace by sea but only if the people above working the mechanisms recognize who you are and decide to actually activate the water to let you up it's really cool this guy's a named character by the way he's jeff kerno and he will actually show up again later so let's remember him for a second but yes here we are so this is dishonored right now nothing we can do here because of course these guys all technically work for me i'm the lord protector i'm not sure why the lord protector would go and like deliver messages i feel like you know, the Lord Protector ought to stay close to the Empress. That feels like part of my job description, but never mind, eh? Corvo, you're back! And here's Emily, the Empress's daughter. Will you tell me about your trip, please? Were there any whales? Everyone loves the whales. Let's play hide and seek first. I'll cover my eyes and you hide. Oh, go on then, why not? Now, given how the Empress was speaking about Corvo at the opening of the game, you might reasonably speculate, hey, potentially, is Emily actually my daughter? Yeah, I think she is, because there's no sign of, like, an Emperor or the Empress's husband. We don't really know whatever happened to her. I'm not sure that's ever confirmed, but uh, given Emily's relationship with Corvo and the Empress's relationship with Corvo, I would suggest that, yeah, Emily is actually Corvo's daughter. Oh, no, I can't actually remember where a good place to hide is. Um, okay, stealth. Yeah, let's just go over here. Dug behind here and enter stealth mode. This is just basically teaching you about basic control, so that's all fine. And in a minute, she'll probably give up and I shall win. Yay, I win. Ha ha ha, screw you. Oh yeah, right, the incredibly important diplomatic message about the plague that's murdering people. Yes, yes, we should probably deliver that at some point. And then we've got two more characters who will become relevant later. Anton Sokolov and uh, High Overseer Campbell over here. Those two will be very relevant. Now this, this I like. So obviously he's painting Campbell right now, next to that their table. However, if I just get in the way... Corvo, please. I can't see him. But more excitedly, this painting is going to appear later in the game. If I change the scene now, the painting changes later as well. So you see there, there's that little crystal decanter next to him in this painting. If I take this decanter right now, yeah, I'm just going to drink this cider. What are you doing? I need the bottle to draw the eye away from Campbell. I suppose I can paint him without the cider. Though in truth, he is always close to this stuff. So we get a Saki remark, and indeed, he will now paint out the cider bottle, and when we see the painting later, there'll be a cider bottle in it. It's very, very good indeed. Anyway, let's go and say hello to the Empress. Hello there, Emily. Corvo. Two days early. Full of surprises, as usual. Now, if you're thinking the Spy Master is so flipping evil he couldn't possibly actually be the villain, because it's too obvious. No, he is actually just the villain. It's that flipping obvious. It's a fair wind that brings you home to me. What news have you brought? I hope that one of the other cities had dealt with this before, knew of some cure. This news is very bad. We're at the breaking point. Cowards. They're going to blockade us. They'll wait to see if the plague turns the city into a graveyard. The more polite term is quarantine. It's a very sensible way to deal with a highly infectious yes, plague. No. Wait, where are the guards? Who sent them away? Mother, look! What are they doing on the rooftop? And in comes some teleporty magic assassin -y lot. And we have to fight those guys, fine. 
And, well, the game sort of implies you ought to just kind of, you know, take them on in a big sword duel there with that little symbol. No, 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 don't bother doing that. Just shoot them. If you just shoot them with guns, you're fine. So I'm just going to blast them with my pistol. Hello there. Oi! Screw you. It's so much easier just to shoot them with a pistol. But yeah, I don't see many people do that. I just see people rushing in to fight them with a sword. But no, easiest way to deal with it by far is just to uh, shoot them. Doesn't matter though, this is a cutscene. She dies, she can't not die. And the magic assassins. You know, they probably should have used the holding me perfectly still spell in the first place. Emily gets kidnapped. The Empress gets murdered. It's all coming apart. Find, find Emily. Protect her. You're the only one who'll know what to do. Won't you? Corvo. Oh yeah, me and the Empress were definitely a thing. Ward us all. Look at what he's done. Yes, he's killed the Empress. That is some terrible happy acting right there. What did you do with young lady Emily, traitor? Her own bodyguard. Ironic. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. Peg him. And that's me dishonored. Lovely. I'm not sure what they think I bloody did with Emily. Like, there's literally no way off this gazebo aside from the one way that the guards were on. Skip forward six months and we're in Cold Ridge Prison. Six months have passed since you were accused by the Royal Spymaster of murdering the Empress and conspiring to abduct her daughter Emily, the Royal Heir, now locked away in Cold Ridge Prison. The time of your execution draws near. This is your final chance, Corvo. Sign the confession and let me give you the right to put your spirit at ease. That's enough for now. Get out. Let's give the man some time to think. Corvo, the Empress is dead. Her daughter Emily is hidden away, and no one will ever know the truth. Yes, unlucky you. Tomorrow you'll be executed, but it's for a good cause. This country needs strong leadership now, someone to guide the weak. And that's where we come in. There was nothing personal in this. Even though you almost sank our plans. But it turned out well. You were in the wrong place at the right time. And someone has to take the fall. Goodbye, Corvo. As of course it's made clear Corvo arrived home two days early and thus he was supposed to be away when uh, the Empress was murdered. That raises the question, who were they originally planning to pin this on? And now the game begins. Properly, lovely. Here we are in prison and we can actually get things started off. We've got meal here. Ooh, lovely, some delicious bread. Oh my goodness, there was a message and a key. Corvo, who we are is irrelevant right now, just know we have faith in you. Here's a key to your cell. Once you're out, head for the prison's interrogation room. Take the explosive there and plant it on the outer door. When the bomb goes off, run, make for the river, lose yourself in the sewers. You'll find some useful gear stashed there. One of the prison guards will leave a weapon just outside your cell. And good luck, we need you alive and well for what's to come. Lovely, I hope the guard in question is basically about to start running immediately after that, by the way. Because I have flipping no idea which one it was and I'm potentially about to start murdering them. Beautiful. So, up we go. Open door, grab the sword, and more importantly, some money. Lovely. And now Operation Sneaky Stealthy begins. This is basically a stealthy, murdery sort of game. All we need to do is pick the right moments to kill people or knock them unconscious. Fortunately, guards are really, really bad at seeing through, like, windows and bars. They can basically only see through open doors. So we just need to wait for that guy to go away, that guy to go away as well, and then we'll be able to pick off that guy. So as soon as that guy turns around... There we go. So now we go for this guy. And then we just hold to knock him unconscious, which is slower, but nicely you can keep moving him at the same time anyway. And then you can either drop him or... I like this, by the way. You can actually throw him. And Corvo's fairly strong, so you can actually throw him quite a long way. So that guy is not dead. He's simply out of the way. But if you're in a hurry, you might want to do a lethal takedown, which is faster. So then we just wait for that guy to turn around. The guards also weren't synced. Which I quite liked. In some stealth games, the guards are all synced up, so it becomes really, really regular and predictable. In this game, that wasn't really so much the case. So we've got this guy around here. This guy just... I don't know what this guy's doing, really. We're just going to assassinate him, because that's faster. 
And then we're just going to... Ah, screw it, screw it, screw it. We'll just go for you. And then we'll just do some actual fighting. Luckily, guards are relatively easy to kill. This is on hard mode, by the way. Hello, I think I've upset someone. I put the game onto hard mode because I find the game a little bit on the easy side, to be honest. Let's just loot him. And then we'll just get this body out of the way quickly. That's fine. You want to... Ooh! Blood splatter where the body hit. That's quite nice. And then we've got ourselves one pistol. So now we've got a weapon if we want one too. Health elixir in case we need that. And that is basically how this game works. You've got in one hand you're going to have your sword. And the other hand you're going to have something else. It can be a pistol. It can be like other abilities later. You can also, I always like this, you could pick up severed body parts and actually use them for things. <laughs> Uh, they could actually be used as, like, distraction items and whatever. So, can I climb while holding the head? No, I can't. Okay, just the head's coming with me for- No, no, the head's coming with me. Okay, get the head up top. Get the head up there. There we are. We can really get some good distance on throwing the head there. Much like in Bioshock, if you find things to eat, you basically just eat them straight away and that's a free health top up. But obviously, for the most part, you're not going to need that. You can look through keyholes or open doors, which is always welcome. Figuring out what's through- Oh! So basically, I'm guessing I've upset a couple of guys because they're running around a little bit. Well, that's fine. Carry the head. Open the door. And hello, guys. Guys, 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 where are you? Where are you? Hello? There were totally two guys that just ran past here. All right, couple of guys down there. Fine, and we need to get the walkway key off them. Now, we could do that via a drop assassination, which is great fun. And there we go. Instant death. And you, my good man, appear to have not noticed. That's good. We're just going to knock you unconscious in a second. And no, no. Oh, flipping heck. Right, okay. Block him. And then just, ooh, and then stab you. Lovely. Guards will do heavy damage. But for the most part, you can get away without actually being in combat. So it's fine. I like, could have actually just, like, snuck up behind that guy, got the key off his belt, and then walked away from him. There was no real need to kill these guys. I just feel like killing them. Because killing in this game feels very, very satisfying, to be honest. Right, back over to the head. The head is important. And in we go to the interrogation room. Let's just quickly leave my head over here. Apparently, I can drink from the sink here. That's fine. No, just just leave no, leave my head here for a second. There we are. Leave my head on the sink. We'll come back for that later. This is something very, very important. The biggest plot hole in the game is in here, and no one really brings attention to it, which is one of the big climaxes of this game. We need to basically take down the Spy Master. And the, one of the ways you can take down the Spy Master is by basically breaking into the Imperial Palace, and then breaking into his private safe, having got a combination. And from the safe, you can get an audio recording he's made that implicates him in the murder of the Empress, and then you broadcast that to the city, and that's it. That's him kind of taken care of, because now everyone knows he's the murderer. You need to go through all of that to get hold of a recording that implicates him in the murder of the Empress. What a lot of people overlook, however, is right here, in this room in the training level, there's this. Corvo's unconscious again. Though he's taken more punishment than in two men we've brought in for interrogation. When he wakes, we'll start again. Having him sign the confession for her murder isn't critical, but it might be useful to us later. The assassination of an empress is not a trivial matter. While it's not exactly a cast iron confession from the spy master, it's good enough that I should really take this with me. Take this thing right here with me. Like, you know, it's just a little bit of cardboard or whatever. Just snip it inside my shirt, take that with me, and that there is fairly clear proof the spy master is responsible for the death of the Empress, not me, but all right, whatever. Anyway, crack open the safe, and we can get ourselves, yes, the clockwork explosives. Perfect, so that's why I need to escape later. Also grab myself some money. Now, at this point, the game is making a big deal about how you can pick up items and you can throw them in order to create distraction, which is nice. It's very nice and organic. There's this items like that all over the place. So you could do that. Or, alternatively, I could use my good old head. Because, yes, you can actually use severed body parts as distraction items. It's beautiful. So first major sneaky challenge, I now need to cross this big open courtyard where there's a whole bunch of guards. That's fine. We basically need to, well, as you probably reasonably expect, stay crouched, stick to the shadows, hide behind things so guards can't see you. Just move from cover to cover to cover and everything will be fine. If you need any of the guards to be distracted, well, that is what the lovely head here is for. So let's just toss a head over here. There we are. That's probably got someone's attention. Lovely. Actually, mysteriously not. They don't care about the flying head. 
Well, that's fine. Let me just wait for a time for you to... So you're probably far enough away. Yeah, this is fine. Now we just sneak up here. He's far enough away. He won't see me. And we're through. This is how stealth works in this game. Everything is fine. This guy will also probably not see me if I stick to over here. Lovely. Probably the safest thing to do is, yeah, take this guy out right now. So we'll just, yeah, hold him down, move him forward a bit, and then we'll just move him into this here corner. Right, he's going away, facing this direction. So that means he goes down now, and again, there's no... Oh, no, never mind, hang on, we stabbed him nice and quickly, he turned around at the wrong moment, but... Everything's fine, right? No, everything's not fine! Oh, I just shot that guy with a big bullet. Yes, even on hard mode, the uh, the pistol hits quite hard, you can't carry much... Oh, okay! You know what, now there's many people! Now we'll just stab you, and then just block at the right moment. Yeah, and then go in for your attack and finish him off. Lovely. Yeah, as long as you're just, like, careful with your parries and whatnot, it's not too difficult to kill these guys. And that's where I want to go, where the god rays come from, the outside world. So, plant the bomb. Probably step away from the bomb. Probably also close this here door. That would probably be a good idea. Let's just close the door. Because if you close the door, no flipping reinforcements can come and investigate. Perfect. Door explodes. No guards can come through. And yeah, actually, there would have been guards coming through. But they can't get through because I shut the door. I'd never spotted that before. That's quite cool. So now I can get through here. And would you believe they've kind of raised the drawbridge thingy. So that does mean I just need to jump down into the water. There we go. Lovely. Got myself an oxygen meter, but it's fairly generous, so it's fine. And then just head over here. Nice. And in the sewers, the game introduces something new. Rats. Good old rats. Rats are a problem in this game because rats are spreading the plague. In fact, rats aren't just spreading the plague. Rats are also just... They've got so nasty they're actually eating people. Quite why rats are actually like bringing people down and eating them isn't really properly explained at any point. They just sort of can now. They're sort of super rats. I'm not sure if they are actually working on behalf of the Dark God the Outsider. Don't worry, there's a Dark God the Outsider. We'll meet him shortly. But yeah, rats just seem to eat people now. It's a little bit weird actually. The wild swarms of rats are not friends to you either, by the way. They will eat you too. So if you see rats coming, basically get out of the bloody way. I think there's some coming just around the corner, in fact. And where are you? Kind of know there's some coming. We've got ourselves. Hello, corpse here. Hello, eat the corpse, eat the corpse. No, go for the corpse. Oh, well, fine. Let's just go underwater. Rats apparently cannot swim. So if you need to, just distract the rats by diving into the water. Nice little puzzle here. We've got a big bunch of rats and we've got a handle over there. We need to turn to open that gate to move further forward. But the rats will swarm me if I go down onto the ground. The solution, we've got to distract the rats by... And also not be on the ground ourselves. We've got to distract the rats by basically tossing them corpses. So all I need to do is just move around the outside of the room here, staying off the ground, and then just jump over here. And then we just need to get this here body that's been thrown down, because they're just disposing of corpses in here. So we'll just grab a body, and then we're just going to toss it over... Like over here should be fine. Yeah, you guys, eat that body for a second. Right, focus on that. Now, is this enough time for us to turn this here wheel? And just keep holding. Yes, yes it was. And now we just go. Beautiful. Now the way that was introduced that early on, you might think that this was like, you know, an important mechanic we need to learn for later in the game. But not really. Um, distracting rats by using a corpse to lure them into an area isn't really something that ever comes up again in the entire game. But uh, yeah, for some reason the game introduces it quite early on. Mmm, rat skewer. Delicious, delicious rat skewer. And deeper into the sewers, we have got ourselves some much better quality special equipment. And also some weirdly low resolution dress shirts. But let's ignore those in favour of the special equipment. Where I've now got myself a lovely little crossbow. A nice little kind of fold out sword thing that's supposedly much better than the sword I stole earlier. Beautiful. I'm not sure there's any actual gameplay difference whatsoever, but I just really, really like this sword rather than the sword I got earlier. So now I've got the pistol. I've also got a crossbow with basic bolts, uh, three sleep darts, so I've now got a long-range non-lethal takedown, 
and a fiery bolt too for when you just really want to rub it in. Crossbow is overwhelmingly better than the pistol just because it's silenced, so yeah, much, much better for that reason. I could slide under this, I could do, or I could just trigger the thing and everything's fine. There you go, you see? Jelly, in case you're too daft to remember, look at your whiskey for the answer. Whiskey got it. If you want your share, you'll sort it out. If not, I'll come back for it next month. So put a safe here. Need a combination. Look to your whiskey. And written behind the whiskey, 451 right here. Not exactly a tricky puzzle. So let's just quickly jump up here. Change this. Safe cracks open, and that gets us some health. Lovely. A Murray jewel box. Lovely. So that's just 50 coins. Okay, just a bit of money and a health top up. Well, that is certainly better than a kick in the teeth. And I should know, I've just spent the last six months in prison receiving a lot of kicks in the teeth. And now we have got our first sign of the guards. They vaguely have a concept I might just be in here. They're not quite sure where I am. So, of course, I could have just taken that guy with a takedown from above, which would have been funny, but a bit of a shame. Because you know what? This guy's done nothing. Oh, now he's just urinating in front of me. Well, now I just don't like him. Whee! And you are dead, my good man. Now, get down. Lovely. And then if we want to get the corpse out of the way, we'll just pick him up. You auto loot when you pick up, which is quite nice. And into the water you go. And that is a good mechanism for corpse disposal. Toss them in the water and they just straight away disappear. Lovely. The game is really ultimately, if you like, actually about kind of doing this perfectly stealthy pacifist. You complete the entire game without ever killing anyone or ever being spotted once. I don't really kind of want to push for that on this occasion, because it's actually quite fun to murder people. They've kind of made the best possible incentive for not doing it that way possible, which is it's so much fun to murder people, you don't always flipping want to do it without people dying. What guards do, however, have is terribly limited vertical vision. They're very bad at looking up. So even if it looks like a guard should be able to see you, if you're on a higher plane than them, for the most part, they can't. So don't worry about it. So you can see that the guards are not the most perceptive in the world. They'll get a bit more perceptive if you get, like, too close to them. But uh, for the most part, if you just kind of stay, like, on a different level to them, especially if you're just slightly above them, they just do not see you. Anyway, we're pretty much done with this level at this point. There'll probably be some corpses dropping in from above. Big corpse train or something. But screw it, just run past here, down to the river, and we'll meet our first friend. Hello, Samuel. Over here. I'm Samuel. And I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. They said you'd come out here. I can still hardly believe it. I'll take you to meet them. Just down the river from here. Oh, go on then. And then it gives me some stats. And as you can see there, because I've killed 10 hostiles, the overall chaos level at the moment is high. During this game, depending on how you do a mission, whether you do it kind of peacefully or in a manic kill everyone fashion, the chaos level is either high or low. That affects what happens in the subsequent missions. Like during high chaos, then there's rats everywhere and disease and zombies. Yeah, the disease also makes people become like zombies. They're called weepers in this game, but they're basically just zombies. So there's zombies and rats and general chaos and destruction and the city slowly goes to hell. Whereas if you keep the overall chaos level low, then things are nice and there's no rats and the disease slowly ebbs away and everything's fine. And ultimately, depending on whether you end the game on high or low chaos, obviously depends on which ending you get. So you kind of want to keep it low if you can. It's not really a question of difficulty though. The game isn't like easier on high or low chaos. It's just more a case of which ending you want to go for, I suppose. It's nice to just play through the game as both just to see the different options. I like keeping things on low chaos because it means the level's more peaceful and regular and predictable and less chaotic, which, you know, you'd expect for chaos, and that kind of suits more of a sneaky, stealthy whatever -y. So in we come to our new allies at the Hound Pits pub. Because the thing we have to do, of course, is take down the bastards who've killed the Empress, because they're led by bastards such as the secret police and the church and the aristocrats. So we've got to join forces with the military and a different aristocrat and a mad scientist who performs experiments, horrific, terrible, tortury experiments on humans. To be honest, I don't really feel like we've got the moral high ground here, but whatever. I'm Admiral Havelock, a true servant of the Empire, like you. Until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group. But we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with it. We've been building a coalition of loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans. But we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, 
your ability in a fight, and in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered. But before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times, but his industrious mind buys him that right. I'm not really quite sure on what basis these guys decide that you can be a one-man terrifying assassination kill machine, but they sort of just decide that's your job. I mean, my role as Lord Protector sounds like head of security. Like, you know, the soldiers clearly all worked for me back when I was at the palace, but they've all... Oh. What? What? What just happened? I walked over here and then I sort of... Okay. I just blacked out. Apparently, I'm also narcoleptic. This makes me even less suited to being the super mega awesome assassin you all expect me to be. Also, they're not really that committed to you because if you throw a bottle in their faces... You lost your mind. I quite like doing that. If, however, you do it more than a couple of times... Oh, hello, there's money down there as well. There we go, four bottles, he goes down, and the Loyalist Conspiracy is dissolved. Because I threw a bottle at this guy, and he fell over, therefore they call off the whole conspiracy. <laughs> I love that. If you kill, or even just knock unconscious, anyone in the conspiracy, the conspiracy's just done. They decide, well, you know what? We were having a lovely conspiracy, then you had to come along and go too far, cover. that's it. The conspiracy's off, we're just going to let the spy master rule the city. Now, obviously one of the first things we need to do is just quickly steal all of the money and tarts from the bloody aristocrat because he's got lots of valuable stuff so we've just robbed him blind. What's on your little audiograph by the way? My furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which... Wallace! Please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well, I'll begin again tomorrow. Yes, what a big damn hero Lord Pendleton is. Truly, we do not know suffering as you do. Did you do that? Anyway, Pierre over here is going to help us with all sorts of equipment. I'll be crafting your weapons and gear. All custom work. For you, I will create the tools of the master. But first, well, I'm going to teach you how to fetch and carry things. Meanwhile, upstairs in his room... The Academy teaches that absurd idea that the energy in whale oil arises from the need to maintain life functions at extreme ocean depths. The pressure and the cold are too much to endure without it. I speculate that a human being might, by a process of adaptation, produce high-energy humors in the body. I could build a tank that would slowly increase pressure on a subject over a long period of time and then observe them for years if need be to see if the formulation of energetic substances develop. Surely the Empress would be able to furnish me with facilities subject to the necessary legal amnesty. The good guys, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, if you didn't see it coming that these guys were going to betray you at some point, then I'm not really sure what more can be done for you. In we put in the new thingy. Lovely. The assassin's mask. You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. But this mask will mean terror to them. If you just hold still, the fit must be precise. There. Can you see normally? Send the lens out of the line, man. There. Better now? I could create more for you. Upgrades for your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city for valuables and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. So yes, that's what money's for. He can upgrade gear, we can buy kind of consumables from him. So crossbow bolts of various descriptions. Bullets, very, very useful indeed. Sleep darts, I'll top up now because those are actually quite useful. Being able to knock people unconscious at range. And a grenade or two will certainly potentially be useful in an emergency as well. But the upgrades are much more interesting. In particular, of course, we want mask optics. Little bit of zoom going on there. Crossbow range is very, very useful as well. Though, to be honest, crossbow range without crossbow accuracy is of limited usage. So let's go for accuracy first. We'll go for range shortly. And then, yeah, once you've got optics and you've got crossbow accuracy and range, then your sleep darts become very, very useful indeed. 
Now you'd think at this point we've just had enough stuff introduced between like, you know, the crossbow and the pistol and the new sword and the grenades and if we wanted to, spring razors and whatever. Like, you know, that's probably enough stuff we should go on a mission and learn about that stuff. But no, the game is about to throw even more new abilities and powers and whatever at us. Also, you know how Pendleton was living in a nice bedroom that was nicely all fitted up? Um, I sleep in the attic. They've put me in the attic and they haven't actually bothered, like, cleaning it. Like, you know, it's still full of, like, rubbish and... Covered up furniture, just masses of cobwebs over there. Like, seriously, guys, could we not have done slightly better than than this? For me, part of the conspiracy. Just like, you know, a little bit of token effort would have been nice, but whatever. Meanwhile, somewhere else, and I now get up, but unfortunately, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Because if I crack open the door, yeah. I'm now somewhere else. A visit from the outsider. Objective. Well, not really objective, but whatever. Something's not right. No. Very perceptive of you, Corvo. Also, very unhelpfully, first time I ever played this, I took one look at this and thought, Oh, I see. So this is like playing with gravity. And I just jumped straight into the water. And no, gravity works normally. In fact, it's just the water goes up. But for you, gravity works exactly as it should. Hello, Corvo. Your life has taken a turn, has it not? The Empress is dead, her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, and you will play a pivotal role in the days to come. For this I have chosen you, and drawn you into the void. I am the Outsider, and this is my mark. There are forces in the world and beyond the world, great forces that we can call magic, and now, these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power, my gift to you. Come find me. And there we are, I now have magical abilities as well as everything else. So, you know, in the wheel where I'd be able to choose between like uh, guns and crossbows normally, I can also choose my first ability, blink. So just hold down trigger, point where you want to go, release, and you now go there. And there's nothing to stop you, by the way, just kind of doing a jump and then just kind of blinking while mid-jump if you want to. That's all 100% fine. And jump! These two gentlemen, who of course look a little bit familiar, are in fact Pendleton's two brothers. We'll get to them in time. And Emily's got a letter here. Corvo, I'm very sad. They say you're dead like mother, but I'm going to put this note in a bottle and throw it into the river because I do not believe them. Living here is very strange. I do not like it. Please come for me if you can. Well, if you told me where you were, I could have done your dozier. Never mind. And as for topping up your blue thing, Piero's Spiritual Remedy. So we've got the red health potions for health and the blue magic potions for magic. Hello there. Meanwhile, over here. Yes, indeed. Hello. I like these guys. We haven't run into these guys yet. Yeah, there's just guys on massive mechanical stilts that have kind of like rocket launchers and stuff. They're really, really cool. But uh, we don't run into those guys for a little bit. In the days that follow, your trials will be great, Corvo. Seek the ancient runes bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world and at shrines raised in my name. These runes will grant you powers beyond those of other men. To help you find these runes, I give you this. The heart of a living thing, molded by my hands. With this heart, you will hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my runes, no matter how they may be hidden. This place is the end of all things, and the beginning. So I now have this lovely little mechanical heart I can get out at any point. I like the heart. People just kind of forget about the heart immediately. But the heart does some really fun, interesting stuff. And has some genuine gameplay advantages to it. Basically, if I'm facing a rune or a bone charm, which is just little upgrades, it lights up and then it beats faster and faster as I get closer to them. You can also give it a squeeze anytime you want it. It just tells you something. All of time is here. Neither seconds, nor centuries. Thank you, heart. Someday this place will devour all the lights in the sky. Well, that's a bit more ominous. And there we are, down here to the good old rune. And that basically just lets you upgrade or unlock new powers. So we could at this point just give ourselves, say, a little bit more health or the ability to see the fields of vision of enemies. Very, very useful indeed, but don't. Do not do that. There's a very good reason you do not spend this first rune right now. How you use what I have given you falls upon you, as it has to the others before you. 
And now I return you to your world. But know that I will be watching with great interest. And it turns out it was all a dream. Or was it? And no, no it wasn't. And you can tell because you've still got the heart. And the heart's great. The heart immediately can start just telling you secrets. Such laughter. And they're singing the old songs. Linking arms. But that was from a happier time. Deals are made here. Sometimes under the influence of wine. And sometimes the influence is the point of a knife. Before the sun rises, they toss any casualties into the river. Men or hound. They all go in. Just nice little bits of background information about the world. Obviously, this is going to be Emily's room when we do rescue Emily. So they've already kind of got it set up like ahead of time ready for that. So we've got Lydia the maid here. Hello, Lydia. What secrets do you have? The other servants don't like her. Oh, I really hope I'm just hearing that in my head and the heart isn't saying that out loud. Otherwise, I'm effectively just bullying Lydia. Her servant wages will not be enough to fix her father's debts. Oh, so yeah, we just get little secrets about all the characters, which I've always quite liked. I think it's something that people don't really bother doing. Like, people only ever use the heart to locate the runes, but they miss that, like, you can learn so much about the characters. She hides her hands. They are raw and scarred from the washing. She's not hiding her hands that well. She's not even wearing gloves at the minute. He spies on his neighbours and reports to the overseers. Oh, Wallace, you're not a nice man, are you? He always eats very well. Even his wife and child Though sadly, I cannot murder him right now because that would break up the conspiracy. Yes, indeed. Apparently, if one servant dies, that's it. The conspiracy's done for. Now, let's just quickly go and grab ourselves a rune over here. Got to be a bit careful in the waters, by the way. Yeah, normally water is not the safest thing in the world. There's little nasty snapping things in the water. So you've got to be careful of that sometimes. It can mean that uh, blinking across bodies of water is a sensible idea. And the heart is really, really excited by that rune there. Oh, there it is. There's a nasty fish that just bit me. Hang on, get out of the water. Corvo, Corvo, get out of the... Never mind, maybe just swim. So that's now two runes. Don't spend them. Hold on to them. Just wait one more moment as we get the first briefing from the Admiral. Well, let's get down to it. First off, I know that assassination is dark business. But sometimes, good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Makes sense. Go kill lead overseer, get diary off him. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us, and if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hell Pits. All right, and rescue Martin. But before we do anything else... Admiral Havelock has seen more corpses than all the rest put together. He has killed whales and men for profit and in pleasure. He has the bloodlust. He tried to seize control of the military after the Empress. After she... The Empress was murdered. Look at him. Admiral Havelock was restless on land. There was a younger brother, and an artist, sensitive, soft, taken at nine by a fever. Havelock loved him truly. So this man opportunistically tried to seize control of the military, and he has killed men for pleasure, and he possesses bloodlust. Yeah, would you believe he's gonna betray us at some point? Now, a particularly odd thing, by the way, is nobody cares in the slightest that you suddenly have a mechanical heart or magical powers. As in, literally, no one even acknowledges this, that you've just got suddenly vastly better at being an assassin because you literally now have the ability to teleport from place to place. Just like, you know, just teleport in front of this guy. 
Hello? Yeah, you see? I just literally blinked from one spot to the other in front of you. And it's not that they can't see it, because relatively early on in the game, there's a special sort of, like, support enemy who's got, like, a magical music box thing that stops you using your powers. That's its only purpose. So the enemies know you've got magic powers. It's just nobody here is willing to acknowledge the heart you're carrying around or the fact that suddenly, and you didn't before today, of course. Like, before today, you didn't have magic powers. They didn't recruit you because you had these magic powers. This is new, but, like, nobody acknowledges it. It's really bloody weird that not one person seems to notice or comment on the fact that suddenly I've just got magic powers. Hey, Cecilia, look, I can just teleport from there to here. Isn't that really cool? Yeah, look at that. Woo! You gonna comment on that in the slightest? I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I know, I know all of your secrets a mechanical heart told me. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. So, secondary objective, spare Captain Kern out if we can. That's fine. Head over here. Ooh. Pretty god race. Yeah, when I first played this game, it was on Xbox 360. I like how it looks on PC on all Mac settings. That's very good. Hello there, by the way. Let's just quickly listen to your secrets too. The boatman has a good heart and respects you. So if you just pay attention to the heart, you can basically predict how the plot's going to go, which is great. You can figure out that obviously, you know, Pendleton and Havelock are both bastards and monsters that are going to betray you, but Samuel's going to stick by you. And so it will come to pass. And the heart kind of tells that ahead of time. But I just like that. Does part of the soul live in the heart? If the heart keeps beating, does that mean that the spirit is never released into oblivion? I can keep a heart beating forever with electricity, but what does that mean for any essence trapped within? It'd be easier if I created these processes in waking hours. I am uneasy pursuing avenues that emanate from my dreaming mind. Maybe I could keep a man's soul trapped in his heart forever with electricity. The good guys! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is more than enough for now, but Dishonored deserves more time than I've been able to give it so far. So, we are going to do a little bit more tomorrow, where we're going to do a proper assassination. I'm going to reveal what I've been saving up those runes for. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been the really rather excellent Dishonored. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Haha, <laughs> I'm a genius at time. Oh, oh, okay, this escalated quickly. I'd, I'd like to fly your drone. It's a bit about a butterfly in a bucket. What does that tell you about the human condition? Are we the butterfly and is capitalism the bucket? What happens if you go right to the back in time? The very beginning of time. Oh, you literally just burn the universe.